Welcome to Command Control Power, the longest running Apple consulting podcast. This is Joe, your host and co-founder. For over 10 years, we've produced weekly episodes featuring epic tales of tech support and troubleshooting, discussions about managing our clients and businesses, and interviews with colleagues and vendors. Our weekly podcast blends thought-provoking discussions on hot tech topics with solutions and anecdotes from the field. Plus, rediscover hidden gems here on the public feed curated from our expansive archive of over 500 classic episodes. For our pro listeners, we offer Patreon-exclusive shows. This private podcast feed is tailor-made for IT professionals looking for advice and guidance on the more challenging aspects of running your practice, working with your clients and employees, and managing your fleets of devices. For a modest monthly contribution, you'll unlock a world of deeper Apple expertise, meaningful connections, and a shared passion for Apple technology. Simply visit commandcontrolpower.com and click support. You can preview the latest episodes and special content there, and you can instantly subscribe to the weekly patron-only episodes right in your favorite podcast app. Level up your consulting journey with the latest episodes, the most candid conversations, bonus features, and more. Join us on Patreon. Command Control Power is brought to you commercial-free thanks to the support of our community. Our VIP supporters include Adigy, Tidbits Content Network, and Cirrus Partners. Thanks very much to our VIP supporters, and thanks to all of our patrons for supporting the show. And now on to the show. Welcome back to another episode of Command Control Power. We are pleased to be joined by Tim Pearson of Creative Techs. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys. Happy to see you. It's been a couple months since we've seen each other. <laughs> yeah, we got to see you at Aces. So it was really fun. Sam and I did. This time, Jerry couldn't make it for Aces, but Sam and I did. You have to I keep bringing that it. up, huh, Joe? <laughs> we got to get you there next year, Jerry. So actually, it's just, speaking of Aces, just been announced that it's going back to Austin this year. So very tempting, awesome. although I do have travel in May again. So I'm not sure if I, I'm going to try to make it because I think there's a little bit of space in between ACES and my trip, but it's very cool. It's going back to Austin. That was a fun time. Yeah, uh, that was fun. I'm yeah. excited to go to Austin. It's a fun city. So Tim, Super I'm just going to ask you a favor. Can you blur your background? Cause all your guitars are really like, yeah, playing me down <laughs> <with my one laughs> guitar. <laughs> I feel so lame over here. I know. Sam oh, needs more instruments. Yeah. <laughs> You put like a trumpet back here or something. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't see an amp, Sam. Like, where do you go? It's acoustic. It's acoustic, I, man. I know. <laughs> nice. We were talking before we hopped on. That's purely there so that when I'm talking to a customer, they have something else to think about. Nice. <laughs> We've got something to talk about how business works. Yeah, right. right. Sure. The small talk. Yeah. I like it. Exactly. It's cool. Yeah. So Tim, yeah, it's good to have you back. There's plenty to talk about. There's a lot of stuff, again, going back to ACES. I guess you're hosting tomorrow, which is the, is it the second one? Is that right in the lineup here? This is month two of ACES mm -hmm. After Dark. And I mean, that ACES After Dark was that thing we tried to do we, when we were in Salt Lake City and I failed miserably at it. Uh, mm -hmm. We just had too many people, which was a great problem to have. We couldn't really get into the details in the woods and stuff about what we're doing. Last month, we talked about business stuff and billing and collections and yeah. plans and things like that. This month, we're talking about what I like to call like stupid MDM tricks or stupid RMM tricks. And so we've got some great speakers lined up. So if you're watching this live now, sign up and watch us. Join us tomorrow afternoon. If you're not watching us live now, you can still sign up. And you can get the videos and you can this one and next one. And then for November, we're going to be talking about um, PSAs um, nice. and some of that type of journey there. So I think there should be some great useful stuff. And for people who aren't in the know or don't know, this is a community thing. We're not sponsored by any vendors. It's not like we're shilling some go buy Adagy, go buy Halo, whatever like that. Now we might talk about those things and how we use them, but there's no, it's by the people for the people. So that's nice. cool. Yeah. yeah. I have Love to say, I like the idea of the tricks for MDM, RMM, because it's, you work in a product, you do your thing, and then it becomes habitual. You just do what you know how to do. Yeah. So hearing other people say, oh, I do this. Oh, I never yeah. even thought about that. You yeah. Know? All of a sudden you have a light bulb. That That's really the, the part that's exciting to me is because I think one of the, one of the talks tomorrow will definitely be a, like, oh, you can do if I could do this, then I could also do that. And I could do this and that and this, and I don't even have to be logged into my account to do it. And so I think there's a lot of cool stuff that we'll see. 
or it could all crash and burn. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this topic is right up Jerry's alley. I know, Jerry, you've been working on, as you shared in a recent show, migrating, so to speak, the monitoring part of your business and the remediation part, mi migrating the monitoring of Watchman monitoring to Adigy, which then adds the remediation capabilities. So that gets to be pretty powerful. So yeah, I do I do like the tricks idea, like Sam said, to just like one or two of those even. You, you implement an Adigy and you can get, it's just really powerful stuff. I, I love the fact that some of this stuff, you don't have to, like you said, log in and go take action. It's just automatic. It's fantastic. Right. Yeah. Uh, for us, 2024 has been the year of integrations and what can we do? What are we doing? How can we do it better? How can we leverage the other tools that we have, do more with less, that type of stuff and better serve our clients. I finally got around to fine tuning the Ninja integration that we have into our PSA, which is we use Halo. And we only use Ninja to manage Windows devices and we manage under 50 Windows devices. So it's not a big amount of anything. And I often feel like, I hope there's no customers listening. I feel like those are neglected a little bit and they're the forgotten stepchildren. And yeah. forever we've had the ticketing come in from Ninja, but it just opens a ticket, whether we're using Zendesk or Halo or whatever. And it becomes this, oh, there's 50 Ninja tickets again today. There's nothing to them. It's like, oh, software got updated. So we just auto close. Yeah, you're right. in this cycle and then you're not helping anything. And you don't miss the ones where actually something didn't get backed up or, or whatever is, is important. I just this week have gotten that fine tuned. And I'm so excited about it because what is cool for me, or I think is cool, maybe nobody else will think this is cool, but we can have Ninja alert and say, hey, we updated software on this device. We updated Edge, the Edge browser from version one to version two. And that can come into my help desk. It gets assigned to the customer that it belongs to. Mm -hmm. And it can go follow like a little workflow and the ticket can get automatically closed, but yes. the activity was tracked. And right. so to some of those, like the reporting, the like dream reports that we always want to like, I just want to show, I don't know, if you talk to any of my vendor or the vendors we use, they'll tell you about the Tim Pearson report. There is still a whiteboard in my office <laughs> that I made up in 2016 that is like, this is my dream. This is all I want to tell my customers, these 10 things that we did this for you. So they're never worried that they're not getting their value from us. I want to tell you that we backed up X amount of data this month on your behalf. We updated 75 applications across 50 machines or whatever, these silly things. So it just, because I think we all get in that spot or maybe we don't, but I think we all get in that spot where we're doing the managed software or the managed, the MSP type model, mm -hmm. but then we're maybe not seeing people as often. And so we want to prove to them our values because we're I think we're always worried that somebody's gonna say, what did you do for me? Lately, I don't right. want to pay you <laughs> or whatever. And so to me, like this became a really cool, like aha moment where I was like, oh, I can open the ticket. I can close the ticket because it fits a certain parameter, right? It says that it just updated software. I don't really care. So Tim, is that just to get into the specifics there, sure. is that body contains quote software updated to blah, blah, blah version? That's a really great question. And that's what got me hung up because I thought it was subject contains. So yep. I was looking subject contains software install colon, and then I could, I figured that would be safe and never, but because it's actually an alert and using the web hooks, it's not the subject of an email. And so that hmm. I kept thinking, I've got this all set up, right? Why isn't it happening? And it's not closing anything. Okay. But I think it's description is what yeah, this particular it. one ended up being, but yeah, but that's the gist of it. Yeah. Is find this thing. Okay, take me to the next step. It you have some kind of a workflow where it says description contains quote whatever, and then close the ticket and do what? Does it log at to so, a text file or yeah? No, that's not how I've got it going. But so in in Halo, you can set up some different dashboards, and this is my next okay. step that I'm just getting to, is so I can pull a dashboard that is tickets open and closed based on this, and then call that whatever I want and to show. 43,000 wow. or whatever. And then, and then I can just present that to a customer on a, oh, or, or I can give them their own login to their side of the platform and they can see the dashboard or whatever. Right. I mean, there, there's, there's a beauty in that because the back end of that or the re reverse of that, I should say, is if you don't have that and then a customer asks for it, you got to scramble potentially. Oh, yeah. oh I got to put this together. 
I'd rather, because some people have said as an MSP, they're like, the customer never reads it. I'm like, sure, that's entirely possible. But the day that they want it, right. it's here's your history and here's the most current data that you're looking for without even lifting a finger. A, a thousand percent. Yeah. And it really does end up being important. And maybe it's not important today for a lot of our customers, but when you get to really talking about security and, and compliance, I don't know, security and appliance, I don't know what I was saying, but <laughs> when you talk about security and compliance, a lot of times you have to show proof, right? And so I love to have that ticket history that nobody's ever asked me for, but knowing that I could go back and say, if you wanted a snapshot of, did this get updated within three days of whatever, tell me when this came out. And then I'll go and look and find the ticket that says, yeah, we updated that software. Cool. One other thing that occurs to me with this, as I was thinking about it, is obviously the automation of it, because we ran into some issues where because of those automated tickets that come in so frequently for certain things, my guys were just closing them a lot and not reading them. And then I had to institute a plan where I'm like, listen, guys, this is not acceptable because you're closing things that have to have action taken on. You're just assuming. So right. I'm like, you need to put an internal note. And in, I don't care if it says just a little tidbit of information, an internal note that says this has no errors or this or that. And But it's still manual. So like something like this would be much more automated. Yeah. And if you can automate some of that. So I'll tell you another thing. And if we start naming vendors and stuff, I feel like they should like give us some props here too. But I don't know. So for me, one of those things that was a just a massive 48 tickets a day that I just auto closed because I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't, I certainly didn't have time and it wasn't that wasn't, I hope no one's listening again. It wasn't <laughs> that important. <laughs> All of those backups that happen on your Synology devices, right? So yep. every one of our Synologies, they're backing up to, they're probably, they might have a local backup. They certainly have a Wasabi backup. And then they also are probably backing up the customer's Office 365 instance or their Google instance or their Dropbox. And so there's all of these backups that are happening. And we all know that it's impossible to monitor those backups. Like you're just getting an email and we're assuming best case scenario. <laughs> and if you set them to like have one of your, we have an internal, we have a couple of internal synologies. So one of those it like acts as a CMS. And so then we may also get a duplicate notification from the CMS saying that this. Oh man, right. I'm, I'm so glad I'm not alone on all this stuff because <laughs> I get the same thing. It's just like active insights alerting me, CMS, like the machine itself. Like I, it's just, okay. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. All right. So Joe, when you sign up for this service, you make sure you tell them Tim Pearson sent you. I will. Okay. I will. So is, is, <laughs> the, is the backup? Plan. I, I want to remember yeah, the yeah, name so, of this. Uh, okay. what, so, yeah. um, ScalePad has a product okay. called Backup Radar. Yes. And backup okay. radar does exactly this and it's fantastic. And if somebody's already talked about it on the show, we don't have we don't have to go into it, but no, I will let's tell you, let's talk about it. Yeah. yeah. So backup yeah. radar is fantastic. Essentially, what you do is you set all those Synology alerts into backup radar, looks at them and circles basically calls out the ones to you that are require attention. Yeah. And all the others don't. And they go on a daily basis. And the backup radar people can correct me if I've got this wrong, because I probably do. But mm -hmm. essentially, we're looking at today. And today on this device, did I get a good backup? I don't care if I got three quarters of a backup the first time it ran. If it runs six times during the day, and like five of those six times, I didn't get a full backup. But on the sixth time I got a full backup, then we get thumbs up. Nice. And that has been life altering. <laughs> because it, it threw it right out there for me. They're like, okay, here's the ones where we're having problems. Here's the ones that aren't. It showed us that for instance, we had set up, we had set up a couple Synologies where they didn't back up on the weekend. I don't know why Yeah, there's, there's no reason to, or not to, we must've just been thinking whatever. And so suddenly we'd get this, we're expecting a backup every day. You didn't get one. Like, why do we, nice. why are we missing a Saturday and Sunday every mm. week? Oh, okay. This is cool. But helped identify some gaps. But the big thing was, I can't, I don't remember the exact number of tickets that I was like essentially just ch -ch 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 close, but I want to say it was probably in the more than 50. And now yeah. it's like one it's. And so I know it's actionable because yeah. if it got through these firewalls, like this is one I actually have to do something about. Yeah. And so I think that's huge. As I listen to all the great things that you're doing here, Tim and Joe and Sam, it occurs to me that like, why 
as I explained on another show, I'm not the guy who's going to figure out that you have to put the worm on the hook and you have to have a line and throw it out into the water. I'm the guy who comes along later and you show me the worm in the hook and you say, this is what you do and this is how you catch the fish. It, I realize that every recipe isn't right for every Mac admin like we're discussing here. Some have, you have PCs in your network, some have more, some have less. Right. But why do we have to all come up with our own inventions? Yeah. Why is this? I understand there's different vendors and and not everything plays nice with one another. But I would almost pay up for subscribing to a service that said, okay, MacWorks, this is what you want to do. This is we've got this thing for you where we're gonna we're gonna charge you every month for our recipes. But this is yeah. the way you can get your life in order because otherwise. I'm the dumbest guy in the room. And Tim, you're extremely clever and you have the wherewithal to figure these things out. And I'm sure you do, Joe and Sam, but I want somebody to show me how to fish. I thought that's what we all came to command control power for. <laughs> yeah, but these are bigger problems. Not these really. are like, I, get, I know you're, it's a joke, but you know, really. it's, a big, I mean, it's, a, it's a big problem. It, it's not everybody yeah. has the skill set or the tools or the time or the technique. Not everybody has the snap on tools that you've got to make everything work together. Joe or Sam, which one of you should tell Jerry that he needs to go to aces? I don't I think that there's a lot, there's a lot of that stuff that kind of I've been comes to up. two aces. I've been to two aces. <laughs> I, you know. so I, I think that there's a lot of that comes up at aces. I also think that there's a lot of that happens in the hallway track, right? There's a lot yeah. of the, Even like, late lifter. I, I'm sitting down with Joe and, and yeah. Sam and we're talking about what you know. I think Joe, we were talking about the reason I made the my PSA purchase was because I could link my Pax8 purchases right, right through and through the PSA and get them into QuickBooks and have yeah. it just shoot through. And that was gonna save me like six or eight hours a month. And not only did was it gonna save me six or eight hours a month, but more importantly, it was gonna mean that I was gonna get my invoices done and out right. the door in a timely fashion okay. between the eighth and the, in the 15th of the month where it's like, I needed to get those invoices out. I haven't done it. Now it's just piling up on me and it's mm -hmm. making me crabby and it's affecting cash flow and everything yep. else. I do think that you're right, Jerry, there should be a service to do it. I would also say that collectively, like the, the us as a group of ACNs from what I know about us, we're all pretty cheap. And so we're not going to pay for another thing to make another thing work. That's just, and sorry, yeah. friends, but we're all friends. So we're, it's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and I'm speaking for myself as well, but I do think that is where some of this community thing stuff comes up. And that's where, why it's been so valuable to me. I made a joke at week one of Aces After Dark that the reason I'm here doing After Dark is because I want to learn some cool stuff from other people that I'm not knowing. My biggest weakness was my collections. Guess what we talked about week one, right? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a self-serving topic. To, to, uh, it was. To, Thank you know. all for joining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's great. So I agree with you, Tim. I think it's great to crowdsource some of this stuff mm -hmm. because sometimes it comes out in the conversations. Here's the problem I'm facing. Oh, I had a similar problem. Here's what I did. Someone else chimes in and says, oh, why don't you consider doing it this way? So sometimes it is about the conversation and the discussion mm -hmm. and just it organically emerges like what the right solution is for your particular needs. Yeah. But I also like what Jerry's saying about a recipe or like, like, I almost want to say, okay, if you join the ACN today and your business is serving small businesses and your average client size is five to 50 or something like that, then here's the way, here's your playbook. Like yeah. it's mm -hmm. not free probably unless Apple wants to sponsor it or something like that, but here's your playbook. And Maybe that means you can pick from like this MDM or this MDM, like those are the top two. And here's what, here's how you do monitoring and remediation. Here's how you like ensure software updates. And here's how you deal with the noise from your ticketing system in terms right. of if you're also adding file servers to the mix or so you, you could just, you could flow chart the whole thing and you can say, do you do this or not? Okay, great. Do you do this or not? Fine. And then you can have instructions just spit out from the other side of that to say, sign up for this tool. It's 50 bucks a month, sign up for this tool and ju just walk people through the process. Because I, I do think there's an economy of scale there. Like, why are we all reinventing the wheel and saying, exactly. You know, it's, you're just making it up as you go along and times how many like hundreds of ACNs, like there should just be like five different ways to do with this stuff. Yeah. And you just pick like what works for you. It's a community that's built within Adigy 
that community portal didn't live up to its promise, did it? I know Joe, this is not a hooray for Joe story, but I, I, made I, some, I think last some I checked, I had the highest, yeah. I had the highest rated like community right. script in it, there. So exactly. Listen, yeah. And everybody <laughs> fed from the trough when Joe yeah. submitted those recipes that seemed to work. But I, I'm joking, um, by the way, there's a ton of, I actually think there's a ton of people in there that, that have contributed a lot more than I have, but back to your quick, point, Jerry. Quick it's clarification quite, from Joe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So that's why I said it wasn't a hooray for Joe story. Yeah. But, fair, fair, but yeah. the promise of that community saying, oh, if you need to do this, you could just simply go here and yeah. all the people that are subscribers, they're going to contribute to this and it's going to happen for you. And you look in there and there's things that have been there for a long time and there's very few new things. I, I don't disagree with you on that, but <laughs> and I think I'm, I made a comment because when you, this came up in the Adagy Slack the other day and I, I made mm -hmm. a little comment on there and and that was basically like, there's a lot in there and I'm not sure that there's a lot more. I know things have changed and stuff, but there's not necessarily a lot more that you need. What I want to be, be like super specific. Right? Every Watchman plugin, like every feature of Watchman yep. that I use, I just want to like have it be an adagy, just add, add to adagy from the community. And a lot of them are there. There's yeah, Backblaze well, scripts. And, I you sure know, yeah. yeah, but the Backblaze scripts, I, I don't mean to, some of the ones that are there are broken. And the only way you can get results from a Backblaze script, and I'm not sure how Watchman Monitoring was doing it, is the only way I could figure it out was to run an Apple script. And that's why Watchman's a good product. They figured this yeah. out, right? Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be super cool for us to reverse engineer their stuff i cleaned no, it up of course not. <laughs> <laughs> and then post it in the community for everybody else until share it right i, I don't mean yeah, to say like, here's Alan here, here's, IP you know. from his back pocket and no. Here, right no I but mean, but just rewrite the script from scratch it just what i mean is like watchman is the list of things that i need sure. and it's actually a, a small subset it's like maybe that's yeah three or four out of those all the things that watchman does is what i really need to have an adage mm -hmm. um, and i agree with you i think watchman has been a great product for a long time they've spent a lot of resources to engineer that stuff to engineer yeah. the plugins that i can't like jerry's saying i can't figure out how to get the same information from backblaze it would take me a lot of hours to to figure that out and so that's what I'm yeah. paying them for. And I know there's, cause there's the, and this also comes is we're in a funny spot, right? Because our platform's fairly mature, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a couple things going on too. So, cause I know that there, there's people are frust have been frustrated cause nothing news up in Watchmen, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure what new we would want in Watchmen that mm -hmm. like, it does what it does. Like we would like it to be on other, we'd love it to be on Synology, but there's a technical, yeah. there's a technical reason it can't be, and it's never going to be. But then also to, to Jerry's kind of question earlier about, give me the blue book, give me the handbook or whatever. Right. The problem isn't necessarily the community or the people doing this stuff or that the problem is in my mind is that if you look at the vendor landscape or you're or like, you call yourself an MSP and you get into the, this MS, like how many MSP influencers are there? And how hard is, let's say, Kase trying to get you to move? First, they're trying to buy all the market, but then they're also incentivizing you to move from one thing to the other thing, right? I get or, an email from my sales rep every other day. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> when we just mentioned them, so we're all going to get an email. <laughs> but yeah, so that's like a, a huge thing. And there are, and I'm not saying that these companies aren't coming up with new products that aren't relevant or, or useful or don't fill 90% of what I need that I wasn't getting somewhere else or like backup radar. To me, that was a new thing. And I'm sure there somebody else was doing it. Or if you were, do, if I was using a different service to backup than like just the built-in hyper backup, is that what they call it? Hyper? Yeah. Hyper yeah. Backup? yeah. I was using some different service, yeah. then maybe that wouldn't be necessary. But I do think that there's definitely in our industry, there's so much, there's so many moving parts with tools and, and we take yeah. a, I take a, I usually spend June like Maria condoing my tool set where I'm nice. like, this is what we have. Is this still, does this still work for me? So do I, how deep of a divide, dive do I need to look into something else? Or like we have splash top licenses so we can do the SOS, right? Mm -hmm. But it's built into, it's built into Adagy, which most yeah. of the devices we serve are, are handled in Adagy. We don't really do one-off work. And then we have a few devices where we have 
their headless servers in some closet somewhere. So we make sure there's six different kinds of ways we can control it just in case something's down. Right. This week, last week, I started getting notifications. Like I started getting emails that the splash top agent had been re- removed from X device. And the first two that came in, I was like, oh, well, maybe Kyle's doing some house cleaning. That makes sense. It's probably machines that aren't there anymore. Mm-hmm. And then I got another one. And I, I said, hey, Kyle, are, is this you? And he's like, oh, I thought that was you. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And then you start looking at him and is it that? And then I was like, did I not pay? <laughs> Have I not been paying? And now they're just, but no, we've been paying. Mm-hmm. And so I opened a ticket with Splash Top and I was like, hey, what's the deal here? And they said, can you get the logs off the device? I'm like, well, I don't have a way to get in. Yeah. (laughs) The device is four hours away. This was the way I could control it. Yeah. But I'm also like, why did I renew Splash Top? Because I probably didn't need it and it's not really hurting me. And then Saturday morning, I I woke up to an inbox with 15 devices gone. had been removed from Splash Top. Yikes. Huh. This is interesting. You have a much bigger install base than I do, Tim, but I Mm -hmm. went through that too, where just inexplicably, and they were the ones that I had automatic login to, just like you. And I did reach out to them. I did the very same thing that you did, and there was no explanation. So So you you never found out why? No, I never found out And they were really gone? But yeah, yep, they were removed. Huh. Yeah, automatically and, removed. And I wondered, I was like, is it they're running old OSs and it's no longer mm-hmm. I think that's like, what that it was. Seen, yeah. hmm. That would have um, seemed normal to me, but they didn't. And I, the ones I spot checked, I don't think would have been the case. But <laughs> it wasn't oh, sparking oh. joy, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're getting Maria Kondo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, day, get, though, so. getting back to the bigger picture, is it, I, I think you're saying in a, in a roundabout way that the marketplace is fragmented because there's so many players and everybody does something a little bit differently. Yeah. And yeah. I guess, I guess it would be mm-hmm. great. And again, this is just wishful thinking to have a resource where a web page would buy some, maybe it could be a consortium of ACNs who said, this is the way we roll down the highway. It may not, there may be other ways to do it, but, th- and I don't know what would okay. motivate I, somebody to do that. I'll do that. What, last willing, what are you willing to pay me a month for that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 at the end of the day, like, that's the question. Right. I'll, you're just asking I'll next for you. I'll give you the Tim Pearson book. What, yeah. what are you, what, what are you willing to pay Okay. So that's part <laughs> He's of it moving too, on. though. All right. I, don't know. I want to respond to that, but that's part of it too, is what I'm saying is, let's say you come up, you're like Joe Sapinari there, and you come up with some jazzy remediation. For the good of the community, he threw his remediations up there or his- I think the answer is zero, Tim. I think Jerry's saying zero. Yeah. But, <laughs> but like in if, the community, if, if I, yeah, right, if I free. spent money, I would say, no. oh, I'm not going to, why, what's my reasoning for share, sharing this out? I'm not a nice guy. Yeah, t- <laughs> these guys will testify uh, to that. So th- there's that problem too, is everybody's like holding their tools other well, than you, Tim, because you're, see, I, mean, I, felt, and, and I, I wouldn't, I, I, hold I, on, I, let me finish with that. that. Because I don't want people to, I don't want readers and listeners to write in. I I think there's a lot of generous people out in the community, like Joe and Sam, Tim. (laughs) But I think a lot of people just maybe hold some of those tools close to their vest. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just theorizing here. Yeah, I would disagree with that only because, especially the Slack community out there and things like that. I'm always finding Mm -hmm. answers, and people are very willing. I, I would say, especially in the Mac community, as opposed to Windows, just in my experience. Just be very forthcoming about here's what I use. Here's what like yeah. the costs yeah. around it and things like that. You just have to ask. And I think, or joking, I know we were joking around going to stuff like ACEs and talking to people. And just to defend Jerry, he's been going to ACEs since we had to ride by train. But you know, the, it's been many years. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> since we've had to be there. No, but you're <laughs> absolutely right, Sam. There is this generous spirit on Slack and there's lots of people out there giving all the time. But I'm talking about solving the bigger problems, not just like the, hey, have you ever seen this? Or what's wrong with my script here? It's the bigger problems of just the day-to-day running your business. Like Tim's saying, this is something that Joe and I have discussed using Adagy and using Splashtop. I'm a Splashtop subscriber. Sam subscribes to Splashtop. Do we need it? Do we need, if I do some SOS stuff, but it's yeah. something that I renewed again. And and that's like, the thing is like, you, you have these, the, this way of putting on your pants and rather than change 
your pair of pants or change the way you put them on. You just say, oh, I'm just going to renew and put on my pants the same way this year again. Well, mm-hmm. it's, it's, okay. it's tools like Watchmen or Splash Top SOS. Right. I have a very strong sense of there aren't nearly as many ACNs as there once were. Mm-hmm. There aren't nearly as many, there, there aren't as many people who are doing what we're doing. So from some of this stuff, there's definitely an economic impact to it, right? What you guys do week in, week out, um, or now, what is it, twice a week and then take a couple weeks off, whatever it is that you do. No, but, we, put it, we put out a show a week. We're, so. we're not really right, here. No, but, it's, it's yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, what you guys do to put out a show every week yeah. is there's a lift to that, right? But there's a, yeah. there's, there's hard work involved. Somebody's got to edit it. Somebody's got to clean up Tim's cursing, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> You got to come up with topics and guests and everything else. It's not a small lift. And I would imagine that your Patreon does not cover your hours spent. Right. Um, so it's for the love of community. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Love it. Appreciate it. I'm a big fan. <laughs> but And I think that when you start talking about this stuff, like Joe, the command control power script in, he puts that out into the community. And then I would imagine, and I could be mistaken, and I know that I've reached out to him on this too. Now his support cost of that script is actually something, right? Because yeah. people are asking him questions about it. Like, how did this go? How do I do this? I, mm-hmm. It's not working for me. It's broken. Right. He didn't break it. It's not his fault. But now he's got to find a nice way to say, hey, sorry. Right, <laughs> you know? right. this Making is offered it. without warranty. And right, or right. I'm right. unable to provide support and disclaimer, disclaimer. But see, to just to respond to what Jerry said earlier, the reason I wanted to put that into the community was like, as soon as I signed up for Adagy and got the hang of some things, yeah. I started looking through the community. I'm like, wow, there is actually a lot here. Yeah. And, I, and started adding a bunch and using it. And also on the Slack channel, there's tons of people supporting like, oh, here's a script I use or try here's a little script that might work for you kind of thing so i wanted to give back that's really the inspiration for doing that and the fame and fortune but yeah mostly giving back (laughs) yeah but to the like bigger picture about as far as somebody putting together this book and or whatever like the guidebook and say like i said what is somebody actually willing to pay for that and Mm -hmm. the answer is not very much yeah and then on top of that is what is my time commitment to put that together? Even if I just pulled my, even if I said, look, you know what? I'm the freaking best model for everybody. You should do it my way. Mm-hmm. Here's how I do it. Like the amount of time it would take me to put that together to give to somebody. And then. Which it, is not exhaustive. It's not comprehensive, just your way. And then I charge you for that. And then you go and use it, but you only use it like half assed. And then you come back to me and want me to like, why isn't this working? I'm like, you didn't follow the whole thing. Hey, I got to keep some, <laughs> now not only do I have to support my customers, but I got to yeah. support you. Like the economics of it are tough, especially when we go back to consider like how many of us are there really? And not so like how yeah, many, what's the actual, total market size? Yeah. It's like not, how many actual, if huge. you go on the locator yeah. and you took all the search things off, right? right. Are there a hundred ACNs in the States? I think I, my guess would be like 200. I don't know. I, I think we just know hosting this show. We know there's a limit. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 You guys have hit the limit, right? And you've hit the limit of the people who are willing to spend money too. Exactly. Yeah. And so, so should the burden fall on the vendors to be more comprehensive in what they're offering us? I don't think there are some, but they, when you do everything, you don't do it well. Yeah. yeah. What do you, what, where do you want to be? Like there's this one company called Rippling, which I only learned about from another client and they do like, you know, reselling MDM and this and that, but it's, how's their MDM? Yeah. It's hot garbage. So it's yeah. like, you don't want that. Right. So, mm-hmm. so you have to pull from different sources and to Jerry's point, like I, I pulled from one source and be like, Hey, I use it for six months. And then I'm like, you know what? This kind of sucks. Now I got to get something else and install that and like potentially reach out to customers or work on them through MDM MDM migration. Oh yeah. And then then on top of that all too. So if this, I do know from experience, you put 65 of us in the same room and you ask what your business model is Mm -hmm. and you're going to get 72 different answers. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So your business model directly affects what my business model may be able to afford some more expensive tools and you can only afford the $1.99 tools or whatever it is. I still mm-hmm. think this whole thing could be flow charted where at the beginning of the 
question Q and A is, are you cheap and lean and mean kind of thing? Or are you like high end? What's, or like, what's your, I, I don't know. And then you can have a few different solutions and even just ruling out saying like these five MDM products are really not viable. Don't even right. bother looking at them. Here's the, the top three that like you should yeah. look at. And if it's, if your client base is mostly 50 and up, then go with this one. If it's like a hodgepodge of all different things, maybe a little residential sprinkled in and go with this one. I think there, there's a lot of, it would be a great thing to have, but I, I totally agree to your point, Tim, that there's probably not a market for it, like to actually make the money back that you're going to spend putting that together and keeping it up to date and answering questions that whole thing right. so and then and then that becomes your full-time job and then once that's your full-time job now you're nest a year from now you're no longer relevant in that answer right because yep. the market has moved away from where whatever you built there's been a, there's been an acquisition a product got really bad all of a sudden whatever didn't keep up mike uh, kingsley in the chat has some comments here because i've thought about this too mike this is really interesting he said on this topic i did consider having a service once where i could train local guys that i wanted to become an apple consultant not work for him but start their own but he quickly realized that it was too much work and probably wouldn't find people willing to pay so I, I think there's room for maybe something in between this, like a masterclass kind of thing where, you know, you offer, here's everything I've learned from my perspective in 20 years of doing this. And here's what works for me. Take from it what, what you want to make work, what's relevant to you and leave everything else beside, but like a video format, that's a snapshot in time type of thing that might include some like space for a Q and a session at the end of it, something like that. And I think that there's also, I don't know, now I'm talking deep way out of turn. But th this is certainly something that I've talked with others about going back to 2016, 2017, 2018. What if we, we all run our separate businesses, but we all ran them sim similar enough and mm -hmm. we could leverage some of our buying power with our vendors because we're all on, let's say we're all today, we'd say like everybody, we're, we're all on Adagy. So what if we could all get now instead of we could say we had 4,000 computers and so our pricing went way down or something. Mm -hmm. or, or even having Adagy sponsor something like this where I'm going to recommend Adagy as the MDM platform. If I put that into this kind of thing where it's, it goes way beyond MDM sure. only, but it's also like specifically focused on Adagy and saying, sure. here's how to tune your Adagy instance to like optimize for the following kind of situations or whatever. And then Adigy could could sponsor that to obviously promote their own product. Sure. So yeah, to use that collective bargaining power to to maybe go somewhere. But then again, that's just one tool. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how far you want to go beyond that. But, it's one piece yeah. of the puzzle. And then there's also the the other thing to Jerry's point or question, or at least this is something that popped for me is because like I've seen in the last couple of weeks, I've noticed, I think there's an uptick in people like in the ACN channel who are new ACNs, which I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then I was hanging out somewhere else and somebody said, hey, you're a consultant. Can we, like, I've been thinking about maybe becoming a consultant. Can you, mm -hmm. and so I don't, honestly, we're going to talk next week. So I don't really know much about, it, but I think there's also like this one thing that I do wish like Apple would do would be a part and they never will. But I would, I, I do wish that as you sign up for the ACN, okay, so here's- Coupons, is that what you're gonna ask for? What's that? <laughs> but what I would, but I do wish that there was like a, some kind of, hey, look, if you're a member of the, the ACN, you have to charge at least $16 an hour for your hourly work or something, right? Like yeah. just, you just put some type of level so people understood too or know, because I think somebody, I, I, there was a question the other day where somebody was like, hey, I got a call. I got a first call from somebody who might be a customer. I haven't even thought about pricing. Like, and of course we don't know their markets yeah, their or market. anything else, but you just hope that somebody's not gonna come in and you know, I'll do all the work you want me to do for 50 bucks an hour. Well, that's awesome for you because you're getting some work, but you're actually not making enough to sustain your business and you're gonna crash and burn. And at the same time, you're hurting the rest of us too a little bit, which I know yeah. that sounds like socialist or something and I'll get in trouble for it. I'm not price fixing, oh, yeah. but, I, but there should be like a range, right? You're going to perform like this is yeah. what it is. And I, I don't think, I think people who are new into the industry or like a new business owner doesn't know how to price their work. Yeah. And they don't know yeah. how to call up somebody and figure out like when I first did this, <laughs> I had a buddy who I had call 
all the other a, a bunch of other ACNs and nice. see, you know like, ask, ask about their pricing. Like, yeah, hey, you're yeah, doing yeah. this and this is what's wrong. And can you like? And we that's made awesome. up a but we made up a fake business. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'm wondering if that's the cut. That's the call that I'm getting because it's had it's some not, people called know. Joe before because Joe's prices yeah. are really. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to go. cut yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, yeah. You get a call on a semi uh, monthly basis to keep yeah, this up is with my pricing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know about your services. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. See, that could be, so like that could be the first session of the masterclass kind of series or whatever it would be, how to price your services. Here's three different ways of doing your pricing model. It's hourly, you know, break fix, which I've never liked that term versus all you can eat all in kind of thing, or somewhere in between hybrid, whatever, how to structure your monthly plans, what to include, that kind of thing. And so that would be like one session and another session. I want to offer a service like this, but I, I keep hearing your voice in my head, Tim, that there's just not a market for it. And no one's <laughs> No one's going to show up. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, it's tough. I, I, I could be wrong. I would yeah. prove me wrong. I'd love to be proved wrong. I'll go make plans and build this thing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> I, I mean, mean yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can finally erase that whiteboard, put something else on it. It's my that's check right. in the yeah. mail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jerry, I'll let you, you, you can have it for half price. I'll do the forward. Nice. <laughs> Jerry always yeah. gets the special prices somehow. That, I that know. Tracks. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to talk about Splash Top again, do we, Sam? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's the one thing Sam is very cagey about is something to do with Splash Top pricing. No what is the Splash Top that you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's great. Yeah, this is, this is it's always fun to talk about tools and structure and going meta a little bit on the tool conversation too to say you just want to say we, tool because it's your favorite I band. I just want to say tool is my favorite band. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, speaking of music, when are we going to get to the music topic and we can start with tool? <laughs> Have you guys ever seen the reaction video genre? No, like, here we on go. YouTube? Yeah, I, t I told you, all it takes is like it's so easy to divert him. <laughs> Some of these, because you, you know what it's, think of one of your favorite songs like the first time you heard it the first like five times you heard it and you're like this is this is like my new favorite song i can't get enough of this song and like now fast forward 10 years i've heard this song about a thousand times it's not quite the same it's i know the song so well that it doesn't hit the same still love it but you can watch these videos of people reacting as they watch this as they like listen to the song for the first time and some of it, I've seen everything from like people's having their mind, people having their minds blown to like crying over the lyrics and music of a song. It's a really interesting genre. Like whoever would have predicted that would be like a YouTube genre. Definitely Since we've gone great. down this rabbit hole, Joe, I, I would have to say, I, I, I think those are bogus. I'm sure a lot of people have already heard the song and then they're doing their like yeah, planned like how, reactions. Yeah, yeah. How could you not have heard I don't know, yeah. a, a Steely Dan song. Sure. Unless you've been yeah. living under a rock for the last right. 50 years. We forget how old we are. Yeah. You know, like there are kids I, that. Yeah. I've got a 32 year old and a 26 year old and a six year old. And like there are gaps. Right. And I would be surprised. Like my, I would be surprised if my middle son like would recognize a steely dan song as a steely dan song for right. sure but yeah yeah my, my daughter's got the smiths on her playlist now i'm like whoa that's awesome that is great like, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, have i told you guys about dad's record club no no i don't think so yeah so i do dad's record club we would have people come to our place and we would have parties and you go i give everybody five bucks and they go to the record store and buy a record and then we play record roulette and they go that's in a cool. box, right? I think we talked about this, maybe. No, but, I, I no, love so they, it. Yeah, so great. records yeah. go in a box, mm -hmm. and we're having dinner, cooking dinner, whatever, having a good time. And you got to go over to the box and pull blind blindfold and pull something yeah, out. Yeah. Whatever gets pulled out, we have to listen to, and we have to listen to at least one side, no matter what. One side, okay. I was wondering if it's one song. No, one, no you got to got to get that's through good. at least yeah. one side. We used to do the whole album, but. How many listeners don't know what a side of a record know, means? About you know, that. It's like, it's like what is that, like 10 or 15 songs? No. <laughs> yeah. It depends on how thick the vinyl is. Anyway, yeah. um, so <laughs> we did that for years. So we'd have our people come over and this is what, it, you know, maybe we don't go by anymore, but it's still, we still play 
record roulette i got a lot of copies of the revenge of bruno which is the bruce willis album because mm-hmm. everybody <laughs> thought that would be really funny to buy and you know it's just, <laughs> so if anyone wants one let me know i'll ship you one. <laughs> <laughs> but but so what i've been doing the last year or so is um because i still just go to dig through vinyl and find stuff because it's fun. Oh, I had, yeah, I remember I had this out and our favorite, my six-year-old, our favorite trip is we go to the Lego store and the record store. They're right next to each other. Nice. And so we go in and buy some Legos and we go and get some records. So we do dad's record club now where I'll buy something that I think my kids should have heard Mm -hmm. and I'll send it to them. And I use Copilot or chat GPT to, Hey, write me a little thing on why this, what were some of the reviews of this album when it came out, Mm. why it was culturally relevant or whatever. Uh, And then I'll add like why I like it. And then also I send them a menu. (laughs) Like I I said, and my request is, Hey, you and your significant other, just dim the lights, listen to the record, have some, have a meal or something around it and just enjoy it and listen to it. And then if if you don't like it never listen to it again, send it back. The next two I, I bought the other day. So, where the next one out is uh, Prince's Sign of the Times. It's a great hmm. album. If you haven't heard it, let me know. I'll send you a copy. And what's the other one? Oh, and then, oh, Miles Davis, Kind of Blue, right? Everybody nice. should have heard that. Everybody mm-hmm. needs to have that in their totally. thing. So. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. Yeah. Record recommendations. Love there you it. Go. I, I will also add a recommendation for listening to your favorite music with good headphones. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I spent probably 20 years of my life almost only ever listening to music in a car or like maybe on AirPods, but my favorite music to actually listen to it with real headphones, it, it can be really powerful. So yeah, I highly recommend that as well. I don't, I'm not a big vinyl is better than CD or whatever. Streaming is fine. If it's like a decent service, if it's not crappy MP3s or something, but yeah. The only reason this is maybe not true, but it feels like it's true for me. Like a lot of things like vinyl the only reason i like it is the ritual of it is that yeah yeah it goes it gets put on and it plays Mm -hmm. and then somebody's got to get up and make a conscious decision in 20 or 30 minutes to flip the record or pick another one and it's there's you can't do it all day like you can't do it during your work day but we're all having dinner on friday night or something it's a nice it's just a different thing and like the quality of it it ends up streaming over sonos so it can't be that right, yeah <laughs> so it plays right. through the whole house but got it I, but i definitely feel that like I, I i do like the just the it's the same thing with like my brother has bought me like three different times i hope he, i'm sure he's not listening He's bought me like a wine opener that's like super fast. I was just about yeah. to say wine. That's the exact same. It's yeah, the, but I like the, the taking the foil off, yeah. doing the corkscrew, doing the thing. That's part of the thing. And so, you know, yeah, hmm. I know these fancy ones. It's like CO two as it pulls yeah, yeah, it yeah. out. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want anything to do with that. Yeah, it's, that's a cool like technology for a gag or something yeah, but it's yeah, like okay. yeah i'm not in such a hurry to get into that bottle so quickly <laughs> that i need the most efficient way to open the wine like right. i'm fine to spend the minute to right. yeah to go through the ritual and it, you're right it's the same thing with the record it's a great analogy with like the big artwork to appreciate that maybe it like opens and that kind of thing versus click a button it's yeah. it's really not the same <laughs> so now i have to watch yeah. almost famous that's like my favorite movie ever so he appreciates oh, yeah. the record so mm-hmm. much and I don't know. Mm. It's nostalgic in a lot of ways. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I'll bring it back to Tool as we wrap up. <laughs> I bought it when their album Lateralis came out in, I think it was like 2001, I think. I, I bought it on vinyl just to have it. Like I never played it. I didn't open it. It was actually signed by them. And it was like $100, which that many years ago was that was a chunk of change for yeah, me at the time. Yeah, uh, I just hold this thing, and I looked it up recently, and it was they're like selling for like upwards of a thousand bucks online. Whoa. Just got to hold it for twenty something years. That's uh, nice. <laughs> not, not a bad return, actually. So <laughs> I'm still not going to sell it, but I might frame it and now appreciate it as like this snapshot in time, this like piece of. So yeah, yeah. it for sure is. I love that stuff. Yeah. This is a, an interesting turn. I knew we'd get to music. We said it at the beginning and here we are. Yeah, nice uh, chatting with you, Tim, as always. I feel like we had a little bit of a dad's record club right here. Just miss, <laughs> only missing the wine. I'm on the water. It's, it's even too early for me. Yeah, yeah, no, same. <laughs> this has been a great conversation and a lot of food for thought. And thanks again for joining us on another episode. It's so it's yeah. great to have you. 
Thanks for having me, guys. I, I really appreciate it. It's, it's always fun to talk to you. And and I apologize to everybody that I I, you, no. If they feel like you know you've aggrieved anyone out there, they can sign up for Aces After Dark, and they can tell you to your face. Do you tell me you, you, you can find me. I'm on all the slacks. No one listens kids. anyway. Yeah. Let us know if you are listening out there. And uh, thanks again, Tim, for joining us on another episode of Command Control Power. Tim Pearson from Creative Techs. Special thanks to the following community members whose strong monthly support has sustained us for all these years: Ryan Gowdy, CoreCompetent.com. Weldon Dodd, Kanji.io, Richard Wingfield, EnvisionDesign.net, Adam Rice, AskAdam.io, Mac Admins Podcast, Podcast.MacAdmins.org, Tim Nyberg, TheMacGuys.com, Michael Thompson, Origin84.com, Matthew Waples, Waples.net, Tom Pulse, BoxIT.tech, Jerome Potters, PITPro.nl, Steve Sorbo, MacSOS.biz, Andy Espo, CallAndy.com, and Nate Sinall, wearescout.com. Thank you all very much, and thanks to our patrons at every level of support. If you enjoy the show, we really would love your support. And if you already support us and can increase your monthly pledge, we really do find that encouraging. Commandcontrolpower.com and click support. Thanks very much for listening and for supporting the show. We know where I am. Half a century.